Hi, I'm Amitav Chaudhary, a father of three proud sons. Today I happen to be running Access Bank as an MD CEO, keeping your wife happy about how well you're performing. Does you have planted this question? I'm quite a soft guy inside. God has been kind to me and I hope it continues to be kind to me in my whatever life is left. What's the most brutal feedback that you ever received on your leadership style? I've had many bosses and those bosses have been, I mean, lucky. I very openly say that I've been lucky with my bosses that sometimes I get, uh, you know, too pushy and too aggressive with my people. But they also appreciate where it is coming from. And I don't want to kind of say, oh, it's a negative, but it's a positive. I think sometimes I go uh, beyond a certain line and uh, that takes the effectiveness of what I'm trying to get through and that's not a good thing. How do you, Amitabh, as a leader, encourage people to disagree with you? I mean, I would say that's one of the traits I definitely carry. I mean, for example, in Access Bank, we have 10 Mancom members. Nine have not worked with me. And by the way, seven or eight out of them have been hired during my tenure. So, and almost all of them I did not know also before I came to Access. So, I'm not being fixated with people and people moving with me. There's only one person who's worked with me for almost 20 years, who's worked through various organizations with me. And I think he brings a unique perspective and skill set to the table, which complements me. And that's why I think we have worked well together over a period of time. He's not a yes person. I do believe that, as I said, leaders do not have all the answers. And if you surround yourself with people who add to and well, you know, add value to you, that's when you can become a better leader rather than having people who just say yes. Yes, people do disagree. And there have been times where People have vehemently disagreed with me. My only point to them is that convince me otherwise. What I'm saying, if it is wrong, convince me that I'm wrong. Prove it to me with data, I'll be happy to change my decision. And there have been enough instances in my life where I've gone and said, sorry, my decision was wrong. Let's move on with what you are saying. Uh, and I think when people see that consistently, then they're also not afraid to come to you and say that, no, I think what you're doing is wrong. Amitabh, as someone who came as an outsider from HDFC Life to lead Access Bank, how did you build trust and confidence with the senior management team? I was lucky enough to spend my first 90 days outside of Access, meeting everyone, a lot of the senior employees of Access, plus a lot of consultants who had consulted with Access, a lot of people who were industry players who had a view about Access, and so that allowed me to form some view of what the challenges were. I had a going in view, but as I met these people, when I joined Access, I had a slightly firmer view. And within 90 days of that, I launched a strategy internally and a vision which we still stick to. That means the basic framework we're still sticking to. Obviously, the elements of the content has changed over a period of time. Because Access was very proud of what it had created. The people in Access are very proud of what it had created. And I was coming and telling them that your glass is half empty. It took time. It took time to build the trust. I also had to take harsh action in many cases. I had to let a lot of people go. I got a lot of outside talent. Uh, but I think over a period of time, people hopefully accepted the fact that whatever I was doing was for long-term sustainability and prosperity of Access. I think they've seen the change come through. So I've been lucky there. I'm not saying we have done a remarkable job, but at least the data, the metrics, the share price, everything seems to indicate that we've done some things right. And slowly, gradually, gradually, a lot of people have started and have aligned more and more to what one is trying to do. Just to double click on that, in the midst of this whole turnaround, how did you go about deciding what are your areas of priority and what you should shut down? So there were some challenges facing us right away. You obviously had to get your arms around it. We had, as I said, quality problem. Uh, we were undercapitalized to some extent. Our customers were not happy. Some of the businesses were not tracking or growing at the pace at which the industry was growing. So some of these were quite obvious, staring in the face, and that's what the GPA strategy was all about. As we solved some of these problems, we kept picking up newer ones. And that's why now we have almost gone and touched every part of our business, both front and backend and we have run transformation projects almost each one of them a couple of years down the line then we said okay fine we're running these transformation projects but what does a man on the street say about access we knew what the answer would be the answer was third largest private sector bank doesn't work there was no area of distinction for us so we then decided and worked very hard to come out with areas of distinctiveness and launched eight to ten year projects on how we'll create this area of distinctiveness over a period of time i think if you're consistent with the vision if you stick to it if you can link and connect the dots for the people who are working with you, you can align them. I think the uh, the results can be quite remarkable. Amitabh, with regards to the Axis City merger, given these were two very distinctly run organizations, what are two parts of the culture from each that you chose to retain? What did you choose to let go of? Firstly, Axis is a very welcoming culture. When you come in, you will not feel that, you know, you have not been in the system for a long period of time. And, I'm, and I said, I'm not saying it because, you know, I felt it. I've, so many people have joined Access, everyone says the same thing to me. You will feel the same. Second is, 
that have patience, we will not have all the answers day one. Third is have trust in us and we will prove it to you. And I think that's what we did. They kept their patience till they actually became part of our franchise. Because they trusted us, a lot of the Citibank people who joined us are already doing very serious jobs in the bank and they're doing much bigger, wider jobs. So all the city people could see that not only we are well taken care of, but we are getting much larger opportunities. Frankly, we can use this franchise to you know, grow in our careers much faster than what we could have ever thought of. You know, we did a lot of things right. Now, some parts of city culture, well, I think city had certain, in terms of how they look at risk, how risk is so ingrained in the way they look at things, but something we need to pick up. Access actually has been slightly on the opposite side of the spectrum. Uh, we were well known earlier for not looking at risk as closely as we should have. Um, and so how do we inculcate that habit and access would be an important thing we want to pick up. What are two key values of the access culture that you're really proud of as its leader? And what do you think you can infuse more of in the access bank culture? I think one has definitely infused a different level of aspiration in the access. I thought it was lacking. Second is develop a self-confidence, which I think they were lacking to some extent. We would not go and ask for our rightful share of business. And I've been drilling into them that no, First, let's get our rightful share, then it gets our disproportionate share. We have definitely moved the needle on that. Two things we need to continue to work on is we continue to need to improve our execution capability. It's partly to do with the culture. We like to be nice to each other, so it's a good thing, but in that niceness, we somewhere lose our focus on execution. And second part of the culture is again coming from the niceness where uh, take more time to you know escalate things and raise uh, noise if things are not going well. Abhitab, are there any myths or misconceptions about leadership that you would like to clarify? People assume that leaders have all the answers. They do not. And frankly, if a leader believes that he or she has all the answers, every day, every interaction, at least what I have found is a learning process. And as long as the leaders make it quite clear to the teams they lead, I think people also appreciate them. They have some answers, but they're always looking for a better answer and they're open. The second thing is the myths the people have that the leader comes with a certain expertise which might not be in the group. The job of the leader is to actually bring out the collective expertise that exists. Third is this, people from different backgrounds cannot do a particular job. People assume that a leader in a particular sector or a particular job can be done by only a certain set of people. I think the right leader can do any job. It might take more time to learn on the job, might make more time to become effective. But my view is the right leaders can practically lead anyone. Amitabh, to a young leader, what's your recommendation? Build a career as a generalist or a specialist? Depends on you. You're spending 75% of your waking time in a job. You better be happy. For me, the most important thing for a person is they should be asking themselves, I'm not happy doing what I'm doing. Nothing wrong with it. And you can still emerge as a leader. And sometimes some people are not happy doing the same thing. They want to do different things. They want to try new experiments. Some of them settle over a period of time. Some of them don't. Everything is okay. As long as you're moving forward and as long as you're moving in a certain direction, I think it's good enough for you. I don't think it's either journalist or specialist. It's what suits you. And what would you say are the two most underrated qualities in leadership today? My view is that a lot of the leaders do not have a clear vision of three to five years down the line. They're just so caught up in the day-to-day -day stuff and what is in front of them. Problems they have to solve today. I think the organizations they lead or the teams they lead do not have a clear direction of where they're headed. And sometimes it's very difficult to paint a vision because then you're required to stick to it. It's not only just about having a vision, it's also about walking that vision. And that's a difficult part because then you have, in a way, made choices about what you want to do and you've also made choices about you will, what you will not do. And that's not an easy thing to do because you know the market might be telling you, your colleagues might be telling you, your shareholders might be telling you that you should be doing something else. Second part is, which is exactly the opposite, I don't think a lot of leaders get into the level of details they should. They are operating from an ivory tower they sit in their corner offices, they do not have a sense and pulse for what's happening in the market, in their organizations, they don't get into enough detail. So my worry is that what is going in the organization, so ultimately what is the truth in the organization is being determined by some very junior people. The so-called truth is that is being fed upstairs in the organization and no one is checking. Amitabh, we have a fair understanding of what big data AI is going to do to workflows, processes, and people and jobs. What do you think it's going to do to leaders and leadership? As far as Gen AI is concerned, a lot of talk about what they can do, and there are some very specific areas where it, you know we can see the difference. Jobs which require escalation, where you carry a certain specific knowledge, which 
you have gained over a period of time, which can be gleaned from documents, which can be gleaned from data sources, jobs of that nature. Wherever you can create rules and the rules are well understood, a lot of those jobs can potentially go away. What's a common career piece of advice that you've heard of but completely disagree with? A lot of firms, a lot of people, a lot of uh, consultants talk about mapping someone's career or asking organizations that we should be showing a glide path of a career to an individual. Uh, I think we can give a general vision and a direction. My view is that a career has to be made by the individual. You can provide the enablers to the individual. You can provide some short-term career paths to an individual. But at the end of the day, mapping a career to the extent people want, to the sharpness with which they want, and how people waste so much of time in trying to define it, I think is a bit of a, a myth, which something which we should not be focusing too much of our time and energy on. Amitabh, for somebody managing a millennial workforce, what do you think leaders should and shouldn't do? So firstly, you know, this millennial is a completely different commodity. They're not looking for a career. They're looking for uh, work experiences. They're looking for varied work experience. If you are running an organization, please don't think of a career for a millennial, but look at what experiences can you provide to that individual over a period of time. Secondly, I think these individuals are much more aware and they have lived in relatively more abundance than what we have. A lot of things come, it's not just the reward which works for them. They're looking for other things also. There is a life outside work. So as long as you appreciate it, I think again, you will treat them differently. Amitabh, what is your take on what are India Inc. CEOs exporting to the world on leadership? I think the Indians in general are much more adoptive than what you would normally see in some of the other uh, countries around the world. Their ability to adopt, their ability to react to changes with a very, very different perspective, I think is quite unique. So we seem to be well liked by everyone. We are an acceptable choice and that's not an easy thing to achieve. I think a lot of the Indian CEOs have done very, very well and they have shown to the world that frankly, you, you know, they can be a huge source of talent going forward. Now, why Indians have done well? I think we have gone through the grind, we have done a lot of hard work, we have faced all kinds of challenges, we have seen volume. There are a lot of ingredients which people learn in an Indian context, which are today to very relevant to the world and to the world companies. And India has become a very important market for the world companies. So why shouldn't they look at leaders coming from India? How do you think the CEO of today is being measured differently than let's say a decade ago? Let's understand one principle that all of us, the media, the shareholders tend to hype a CEO uh, quite a bit when the results are good and they tend to bring them down very quickly when things are not looking good. I don't think the CEO itself really changed that much. But that's a life we live in and we need to be used to and fully understand and appreciate this point. The success measures have definitely changed because the market expects different things from CEOs now than what they're expecting 10 years back. The challenges have changed. The global context has changed. So yes, the success measures do keep changing. Changing. But, you know, if a CEO is not adoptive and not able to understand and appreciate the success metrics, then they should not be sitting in that chair in the first place. For somebody who has transitioned multiple careers, from your days at Credit Leonese and Bank M, to your days at Infosys BPO, HDFC Life, and now leading a universal bank, what's been the most difficult transition? There are a lot of variables which are different when I transitioned from investment banking job into Infosys BPO. And when uh, I was given a title, uh, at that time I was told I'll be VP transition, I could understand the little meaning of the word, I did not know what the job entailed. And when I came in, I think that's the first question I asked, so what is the framework, what is the method you use, what is the kunji to take a job from US and plant it in India? And we, I actually worked with the team to develop it, because it was not there. And yes, it was a great journey. You know, when you when you take up a challenge like this, where so many things are different, it was a just a wonderful journey, and I learned a lot through the process. But it was difficult because it was new industry, new job, new company, startup. Everything was new. Three words that simply describe Amitabh Chaudhary's leadership style: passionate, energetic, willing to learn. Amitabh, is there something you wish you had known more of about leading people? Maybe I could have shown more empathy during my uh, career as a, and I've spent a lot of time as a CEO, as a CEO or as a team leader. People tell me that more empathy would have helped. I don't know. Amitabh, what do you think you can get better at as a leader? There is one thing which I want to improve. For example, I need to understand the new technologies much better than where it is today. I need to understand the changing consumer behavior much better than where it is today. What are really those factors will make them change? But can I get better at it? Yes. Should I get better at it? That strive to get better is always there. And the moment that stops, I'll become less effective. How does Amitabh encourage ideas from a large workforce as the leader of Axis Bank? You need to walk that talk. You need to demonstrate to the people that all ideas are welcome. Second is you do need to create some framework or some mechanism 
in the organization where people can share ideas third you sometimes need to form specific teams uh, because it could be a big idea for example in access bank when i came in we set up a digital bank we had a certain view on it and now it has become much bigger than what it is you need to go and form a team and actually take a bet and it's an optional bet you need to take and spend some money and be willing to spend some money and also know fully well up front that might not work out beyond the shareholder value and the numbers what are you most proud of about leading access bank people in access now believe we can win and we have the platform to win it's a big thing I mean, you know earlier they were happy being number 3 i think today now they believe why can't we be number 1 amitabh is ceo of access given that you manage multiple other ceos how do you navigate these power structures and equations i think first is the fact that they're willing to come and work with someone like me itself is a big thing that they believe that with me they can get the empowerment and the independence they're looking for very important when i i remember when i uh, came in and met rajiv we kind of discussed various things and we made some promises to each other and it's 5 years now rajiv will tell you that one has kept all those promises and rajiv has also done his bit completely there are enough things to do we are a large size institution there are enough things to do if person is doing their job well there is no need to go supervise these people and unnecessarily interfere i think your focus is always has to be on what is not being done what can be done better rather than you know going and interfering in something which is going well and i think these people appreciate and enjoy the fact that they have their empowerment and independence to go and do these things independently how does amitabh choudhry give his ceos and cxos feedback oh we have a very uh, established process where Every six months, I sit down with each of these individuals and give them qualitative feedback. It's part of the ritual, and the feedback is always around areas of improvement. I mean, I tell them that what you're doing well, you know, I know. Let's focus on what I believe we need to do better. And I think initially, obviously, for some people who not work with me, it comes as a surprise. But slowly, gradually, then they start appreciating that yes, it's candid, it's directly to them, it's not being talked about. and the intention there is for the individual to improve uh, there is no other intention there is no other agenda it's it's now a ritual we do it twice a year two things never to do in a meeting with amitabh don't bullshit i know the stuff i know your business second give me an honest answer i appreciate that much more than trying to give me a long winded answer i'll be able to catch you if if you are not giving me an honest answer who are the three people that have most influenced you in your career who are they and what did they teach you so firstly i think you were a teacher in school who really influenced me in terms of raising my ambition level and what i was capable of i've had two really good bosses in my lifetime one retired as a director of uh, standard chartered bank and one retired as a director of infosys and they were not only my but you know kind of bosses but they also great mentors asked me some tough questions made me think outside the box even today i'm in touch with them and i want to respect and regard them for his huge amitabh who in business india is inspiring you right now and why i think i've always been amazed by how mr mugesh ambani has created a business model which just takes the win out of the sales of the businesses they enter in they are about to enter the financial services space also but the amount of money he is willing to put in to get an operating model which just becomes so competitive is pretty amazing and that requires a lot of guts lot of thinking lot of execution which uh, he and his team has done amazingly well second is that i think if you look at uh, a leader like say sir sunil mittal they started so small and one of the few indian companies who's been able to go abroad has a pretty large market share in a country like africa and in spite of all the struggle they could really make a business out of it and now is you know got into other international businesses um, admiration for someone like him if you could put somebody in this seat and you could interview somebody there who would it be and what are you itching to ask them i would like to like to ask a china leader was a reason being why is he doing what he is doing amitabh what's the end goal for someone like you and what brings you and inspires you to work every day i think when i came into access for example i made a clear statement that we are number 3 aspiration is to move up the ladder and ladder is not just in terms of you know market cap or anything i think in me in my mind that market that ladder is more around respect respect of access bank as an institution and that's a huge inspiration what creates self doubt for amitabh and how do you deal with self doubt well you know in a large institution like this uh, problems are coming your way every day and a lot of them are unexpected problems self doubt does emerge once in a while but when you've seen it for such a long period of time you develop mechanisms to look at the worst case scenario and then work off from there that okay this is the worst that can happen everything from here is an upside and then you start looking for solutions and how to you know solve the problem and 
and remove that self doubt rather than saying oh there's a self doubt what do i do amitabh choudhry your quick fire with kunba starts now the hardest thing about being a ceo is keeping your wife happy about how well you're performing one thing you've learned never to do as a ceo vacillate one thing you've learned leaders always must do get into detail one thing you wish people knew more about you i'm quite a soft guy inside one personality trait that gets in your way the most speak too fast one thing in your job that you could get better at understanding technology better a butterfly is in your stomach moment in your career i have lost my job uh, once in my career and i thought it would be a tough time thank god it happened it worked out but it might not have worked out morning person or night owl used to be night owl now i'm on person first thing amitabh does in the morning the last thing he does at night read newspaper read a book and that order your favorite work day time waster sitting in front of the idiot box a secret vice no one knows about you for your binge watching what it is your favorite binge watch till date i liked the first season of mirzapur one when in doubt amitabh choudhry dash keeps the silence business buzzword you dislike let's take it offline besides his family amitabh's most prized possession is my book collection 20 years ago money for you meant car today money for you means just being able to maintain a certain lifestyle what's been on amitabh's to do list for the longest time retire the soundtrack to your life will be have a great time cheesy song that you're often caught humming in the car rem jim gere saavn one startup founder that's really caught your eye phone pe samir nigam a personal concert in your living room with zakir hussain or dinner with sam altman zakir hussain your favorite movie show book or character when we say the word leadership books by osho what does amitabh choudhry's family discuss the most at the dinner table discuss politics disagreements around on specific political leadership styles one thing that your wife and team colleagues would all agree about you pushing all the time life after access will look like extremely relaxed the one line note that you'd leave on your successor's desk as i said extremely satisfied with with what i delivered and tried to deliver nanda nilikani in one word visionary deepak parikh in one word created world class institutions repeatedly how would you describe your parting meeting with mr parikh no thank him for everything he was not happy that i left but i have to admit acknowledge that i achieved uh, and did a lot in my stint in igfc group and he had a very important role to play with it so i still thank him amitabh if you had a gigantic billboard out there and could put out a message to millions what would it be and why access is again number 1 thank you amitabh choudhry for doing this with kunba It's been an absolute delight chatting with you today. Actually, you were supposed to sit. Oh, I didn't mean to be uncomfortable. We're doing it at the end. <laughs> okay, start. Okay.